Hi everyone, I'm Hui. Today I'm going to talk about the three trips I had done in the past two months. First of all, Rooster Call Mountain Hike with my friends. It is a mountain that the summit is 2,600 feet tall above the sea level. Unfortunately, we only halfway done, as you can see, only reached to 1,700 feet. I was found something interesting, which is snow, very typical. You can see the snow that I was using the scope 10 tons bigger to see how is snow look like. And I find out now, wait a minute, snow has a large space between, which is called porosity. And it was snowing day that the snow keep falling down that just pile up like a thin layer. This just make me think about how it is formed to get sedimentary rocks. For example, sandstones. You got to have sand grains that pile up together in order to form a sandstone. And sedimentary rocks are usually have a layers that just make me realize snow is kind of related to sandstone in a way that when it piles up becomes a layer. What's more interesting is that the more snow falling down on the mountain, they'll eventually pile up higher and higher. You might wondering at the bottom of the snow will get all the pressure from the top of the snow which means the porosity will get smaller and smaller, eventually becomes ice. This is how glacier forms on top of the mountain. Ice, very interesting. There are few places on earth where you can find ice naturally. First of all, the continent Antarctica, which is located in South Pole that has huge ice sheet on top of its land. And this is uh, Everest Mountain, tallest mountain in the world today. You can see there's a glacier on top of it. Second of all, what makes ice a mineral is that it has a chemical composition of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. It has a crystal structure of looking like a hexagon, you can see. Of course, ice is inorganic, which means it's not produced by the organism. Last but not least, all the mineral has to be solid and ice is the solid form of water. Another hike I want to talk to you is that the Buck Mountain hike, which I was luckily to be on top of the mountain. The summit is 2,300 feet tall above sea level slightly lower than the first hike. On top of the summit, I was able to view the entire Lake George. This is a freshwater lake. You might wondering why is freshwater lake? Because of the last ice age. You can see the giant land mass ice sheet was completely covering the northern part of North America which causes a landscape of U-shaping valley you can see on Lake George's mountain. On the way to the summit, I was being surprised by those giant rocks. You can see the first picture that this rock is taller than my entire body. And when I all the way get through the summit, I was being shocked that the rock on the summit 
is uh, two or three floors tall. It's just unimaginable how come these huge rocks is sitting on top of the summit. Which I did a research about the Grenfell originate. It was an intense tectonic place movement around one billion years ago. The rocks, originally sedimentary rocks or igneous rocks, were deeply into the middle of the crust, where there's a high pressure and high temperatures that eventually turn those rocks to metamorphic sedimentary rocks. This is why when I was showing you the map on the right side, it shows purple, which is represent metamorphic sedimentary rocks on Lake George. Because Lake George, you can see that the legacy of Grenfell organisms is from Northern East Canada all the way to Alabama. It's also including Lake George. That's why you can see it. Last but not least, I want to talk about my life experience to see a totality of solar eclipse for the first time in my life. How is totality works? First of all, you have to make sure the sun and the moon is on the same line. That's how you can see it. And what's more interesting is it, when we are on Earth, we can see the sun and the moon in the similar sizes due to the distance that sun is actually very farther away, but it's far enough when we look at the sun, it's just a similar size like moon. That's how it's able to cover it and we can see the corona of the sun. And I just trying to mention that this is not to scale, by the way. Additionally, when we are on Earth to see the shadow of the moon, there's two types. One is umbra, which you are able to see the total solar eclipse. Another type is a penumbra, which you can only see partial of solar eclipse. The farther away from the umbra, the less covered of the sun, which makes it the closer to the umbra, the higher percentage of sun will be covered by the moon. And thank you so much.